Diane, I'm listening to a podcast, Black Lodge Trivia Night. I've never heard so many game aspirations in my life. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Black Lodge Trivia Night. And I'm Matt. Hey, and I'm Art. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, and I'm doing especially great because it is one of the best times of the year. It's spooky season. It is spooky season. Now, let me ask you, um, is it back? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I've got, um, what is this? What is this? I could like, <laughs> honey, bring me a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> not to, uh, not to, uh, just spring it on you, but yeah, I was, cause again, well, I it's got just, the candle. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> start a spooky season. I figured, and it's getting a little chilly here. Um, I know it's not maybe the case out by you, but, um, well, we started to get chilly and then tomorrow it's going to be night. <laughs> Perfect. So. So this is the second summer for us Midwesterners that we're so used to. Um, I've got the King in Yellow down here. Oh, nice. Um, which is um, from Sins from Hell. Right. And oh, yeah. uh, given it's what we're running tonight, uh, it feels apropos. Yeah. Yeah. This is always like, uh, so most are, I guess maybe not, but you know, I've always, so I, I co-host something called History on the Table. It's a war game podcast. You don't need to go seek it out if unless you're into that kind of thing. But every spooky season, we always usually we talk about Mike Flanagan, but there is no Mike Flanagan show this yeah. year. Um, but we do talk about like spooky books that we read and we just we just recorded that episode and kind of talked about what was what was going on. So I get very excited for this. And then since we've been RPGing, I've always strived to do something spooky. It doesn't always happen. Right. Last year, I thought we had a great success and played some amazing rules, light, spooky stuff. So here we are. We're back. We're playing Liminal Horror, which is a rules, light, investigative horror game. We're continuing. This is part two. Mm -hmm. If you're finding this and you haven't listened to part one, you should go do that first. Uh, yeah. Because there is an amazing uh, introduction by Art. Uh, he's playing a really cool character. But yeah. Mm. If you do need a summary, you can summarize it as a priest, a cop, and a reporter walk into a bar. <laughs> uh and that's about it nice. but you should definitely go listen to session one because that's actually a terrible summary so um and it was really i gotta say and i think at the end of it i said like is this kind of the best rpg shit like this setting this kind of rules light yeah uh, i was really having a great time with the first session so i'm looking forward to tonight well i hope i can deliver again i was i was listening back and i i got to the, like the end and then when you said it was so amazing i was like fuck i can't <laughs> like i really need to deliver now uh, yeah. so the, the pressure is, is high, but uh, I think it'll be worth it. So, but I do want to backtrack a little bit. Mm -hmm. One, we have some business to take care of, but before that, I always, and like, we're about to do a little anniversary trip just to like a little cabin with a wood burning stove and I'm bringing fucking spooky books from floor to ceiling, man. Nice. Um, what about you? Do you have any like fall? Halloween vibes uh, or, or traditions, not vibes. Traditions, uh, traditions you know, I, I gotta say I'm really bad about that kind of stuff. I'm yeah. in the past. I've never been like a horror kind of guy, but I, um, I will say fall is my, my favorite season by a mile. And so I get into, I think this is, you know, like people are like once winter's open over and they have seasonal depression, I think in spring, they finally feel like they wake up. I feel like that in the fall. And, um, I just, uh, I, I, but I want to maybe rewatch, um, blue velvet. I was thinking about doing that. Oh, I'll um, do it with you. And then I was doing, Oh, interesting. Um, I was also doing a little research for tonight's question. I was like, God damn, I, maybe it, it is time to watch twin peaks. Nobody's going to watch it with me in the house. But it's just something stoically. I may it's perfect time of year for it. Yeah, it's just the right time. I, I, I um, yeah. I although I Fuck do. It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch some Twin Peaks tonight. I, <laughs> after we're done, I'm gonna watch some fucking Twin Peaks. Tonight. Should we just scrub this? <laughs> Fuck yeah! Let's we'll just fucking record it and do a live watch. Let's just, let's let's live stream it. I'm sure everyone would be fine with it. That doesn't. No, that that always goes very over use, well. Fair use. <laughs> exactly we're commenting over it oh my god boobies um <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway the log lady scene is where that comment went <laughs> exactly r.i.p 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uh, feels good about that one. <laughs> but that's what we're here for. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Do you want the? Do, do you have trivia? You want me to re- spit out some trivia? Yeah. Well, hold on. We, I I said no. Oh, right. You're gonna. I yeah. T- I su- no, no. Hold on. Real, real quick. Real quick. So, but I do have to ask. Mm-hmm. Do you like the Flanagan shows? I can't, have we talked about this? I can't remember. Do you like the Flanagan stuff? I still have never seen it. Oh uh, shit. Are you are you a little scaredy cat with movies? Is that what? Um, it, it's twofold. A, how dare you? Yes, calling me out in, <laughs> on the internet. But B, um. I don't have a ton of time to watch television. And so it has to be something that my wife like will both want to watch. Okay. And she fair. like that. That's why I haven't rewatched it. She really doesn't go for that kind of stuff. Okay. The Flanagan stuff. Like I actually genuinely liked the first say three or four seasons of American horror story that I watched. I thought that it was not from a heart. I thought they were actually interesting stories and they did some stuff. Yeah. I didn't expect. I think I would like Mike Flanagan. I don't love cheap jump scares. But which I've heard might be a thing. But if there's more to it that's interesting in terms of the story or setting, yes, um, then I can look past a lot of things too. Which is the case with American Horror Story. You might. What I would maybe start with is Midnight Mass. Um, from an artistic standpoint, I think it's one of the best shows I've ever watched. Oh, interesting. Um, acting, writing, the message it's conveying, all of that stuff. It's also, and this is not a spoiler, it's the least jump scary. Okay of um well the fourth the fourth show whatever that was midnight club or whatever right uh, i didn't even finish that one uh oh. midnight mass is amazing okay the fourth season whatever that other show was called i think he makes fun of jump scares <laughs> there is a scene where it's like a consecutive 30 jump scares in a row and at some point you just like start laughing <laughs> like it's not like it's not trying to set you up you know all 30 are coming hmm. But I just like started cracking up. So like it, when you said the jump scare thing, that's the first thing I thought of. Haunting of Hill House is chock full of jump scares. Okay. Fuck. From just like a, you would know this more than me, but from like a, a film study perspective, mm-hmm. they're fucking brilliant. And the story of Hill House is so tragic and amazing mm. that it makes the horror worth it like i love horror movies but typically i'll go for like halloween or or shit like that like right um something like the conjuring which is you know full of jump scares or Mm -hmm. or something like that like i'll watch those things but um no i want i did not mean the detour uh i think your homework is to watch flanagan show which because i think you'll be really impressed which one if if you were trying to like which one quality wise would be the best if i was trying to introduce somebody to it so there's something else there to get them hooked besides Maybe. Okay, I think there's maybe Midnight Mass, um, which has the quarterback from Friday Night Lights in it. Oh, okay. Um, and it depends if if <sighs> Haunting the Pill House is one of the best shows I've ever watched in my life. Okay, but then also if like if you're gonna sit down and watch it with your wife, she's not gonna go for the jump scares. I personally loved. Bly Manor okay but some people thought it was too slow I think the story of Bly Manor was amazing I love they're my favorite characters out of everything he's done but I know a lot of people are like it's more um like true gothic horror it's less oh scary and terrifying there's a certain level of romance and it's dry and plotting but we've talked about this before with like shows that I've recommended to you like I like a good dry as long as the story's there like if it moves slowly i'm fine with that um yeah it's really hard to say slow burns are good yeah it is a it is an absolute slow burn but it's a little bit of a um a like classic um, no classic but anyways i think you can do if you want the scariest i say okay hunting the hill house if you want the like most emotional and probably the best all around midnight mass okay and then do blind manor i probably wouldn't start with blind manor but i love it it's probably my favorite. Do we need to tier rank these? We don't have oh, to. Oh, those three are all S tier. All S tiers. Interesting. Okay. Those three are. Yeah. And the fourth one? The fourth one I didn't even finish, and then I haven't watched The House of the Fall of Usher. Got it. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Sorry. But yeah. Sorry for the detour. <laughs> no, no. Maybe I'll, I'll give one of those a shot. Um, maybe she'll be up for it, given that it's Halloween and blah, blah, blah. 
she might she might be willing to and and you could tell if you do midnight mass be like there's and honestly there's probably like less than 10 jump scares over the whole season with midnight okay. mass we're with like hunting the hill so there's probably 10 an episode and they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll fucking get you i'll tell you they're 10 and all 10 of them will still pull your pants down and get you <laughs> all right so, okay, okay. Cool. all right sorry let's get down to business Right. Which is not playing RPGs. It's fucking Twin Peaks trivia. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, did you want me to give you the tri- trivia question? Yeah, sorry, I'm not prepared. Okay, here we go. Yep. Uh, Twin Peaks The Return, final season. Okay. What is the last line uttered in the show? Fuck. Does it have to deal with Annie? Uh, and it's it's not season two. It's season. Uh, just made, yeah. It's it. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Annie. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Annie. Right. I thought. But doesn't it end with Annie? I don't know if it's not if it doesn't have anything to do with Annie. I don't know. Uh, nope. Um, the final thing said by a character is uh Laura Palmer, who is not actually named Laura Palmer in this timeline. That's what I meant. I meant Laura Palmer. Okay. Sorry, that's what threw me. Yeah. Uh, she. She's outside her house, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And at first, she doesn't right. recognize what's going on, and all of a sudden, something clicks, and it's the most blood curdling scream yep. Yep. you've ever seen. Yep. Um, bonus points if you can name, if you can, what's Dale Cooper's last line seconds before that? Oh, I don't remember. But I do, um, I think I'm crossing, I was crossing wires. Obviously, how's Annie right. for Twin Peaks? And then I was like, oh, it's Annie at the end outside her house. Obviously, it's Laura Palmer outside. Right, right. Her house. And then that scream. No, what does Dale say? I don't remember. Uh, Dale's final line is, what year is this? Oh, yeah. And then Laura Palmer. Oh, yeah. Fucking scream. It was, oh, my God. It was such a, it doesn't spoil anything because there's like. Right. Me telling you that you're never going to know what, what's going on. Even if you watch it, you might not know what's going on um, no. in the moment. But it was such a good ending, and I was just like, "Oh God!" Maybe I'll put a, a little spoiler alert in the in the notes. Like, hey, we talk about literally the last twenty seconds of the last episode um, because it is a moment. So anyway, so what does Laura's scream mean? Um, so what I in the moment for me and i and i think this is not like an uncommon interpretation of it uh something broke through even though she's not technically laura palmer literally um something broke through across the the fabrics yeah that because of what she experienced in one fabric was so intense and evil and mm. tragic uh it it broke through and connected with this other version Right. Yeah. That's, Which I don't know how much you like Dale is in some other. Right. Right. It's not, it's not the twin peaks of twin peaks season one or two. Mm-mm. Right. No, no. Um, such a good ending again, like from a logical standpoint, don't think about it too much. Um, yeah. Right. Which is the classic thing with a Lynch film. Um, think about it later, but in the moment, just, uh, I just take it in. Um, Anyway, and it was like, nice. I, I got to rewatch this. Anyway, enough of that. Good question. So what are we watching after this? Are we watching Twin Peaks? We're we watching a plane again. Uh, or Blue Velvet. You tell me and I'll, that's the first thing I'll queue up. Okay. Um, I've been dying to do a full rewatch of Twin Peaks, which I think a lot of people think that Blue Velvet might be the unofficial prequel. Oh. Um, it's, it's not literally, but sure. you can see the progression. You can see the evolution from blue velvet's twin peaks so i was gonna do twin uh blue velvet first and okay. then I'll yeah cue it up watch it nice uh yeah we're about to violate copyright yeah <laughs> hang on <laughs> strap the fuck in boys <laughs> i just drop this link over here change uh... <laughs> even worse yeah we're gonna link up a cop a pirated copy just oh yeah i'm just gonna assholes. find like uh <laughs> something from youtube we'll have to watch it over like 35 parts and the right. screen's gonna be flipped it's gonna be mirror imaged <laughs> yeah and then we'll do it all those douchebags like who have like a million followers they just sit there and go like while they yeah. steal somebody else's content <laughs> black watch trivia night reacts <laughs> exactly 
Love it. I'm sure David Lynch is fine with that. Like Absolutely. he wouldn't be he wouldn't be the kind of person that's opposed to <laughs> someone watching Blue Velvet on their phone with our faces over <laughs> half the screen. Going. Like he's fine with it, right? <laughs> oh. God damn, I hate those people on YouTube that just steal other people's videos and then put their dumb mugs on it and mm-hmm. and they'll be like, but we give them exposure. And somehow that works. Yeah, that's like fucking as somebody who works in an industry where people tell you like, oh, you, this is good exposure for you. You're always like, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, or the quote, good fellas, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Anyway. Nice. Okay. Let's let's play a little bit. Again, this won't be the longest session. Um, I'm coming in hot to the session tonight, but it is spooky season and we've been looking forward to get back to this. Yeah. If you did listen to episode one, you'll know that art and i both loved our experience with liminal horror so and we're doing one night at the shelterwood inn as kind of an intro into the system before we potentially dive into a longer ongoing campaign uh last time we were introduced to don carter which is art's character and art uh don and his um oh shit what's her name billy billy that's what it is uh billy uh had a little inclement weather as they were uh on their way as podcasters to go cover a story uh for the up north about north about some missing and, and dead people unalive people and they pulled off on the side of the road as some freezing rain started to settle in at the shelter wood inn and had a very interesting experience Mm-hmm. with some interesting characters and you had just walked out to get billy who was very confused and as she started to walk into the shelter wood in you heard a visceral growl come from the woods and that's where we left off and that's where we'll pick up unless you have any questions uh just in, i'm trying to remember the name of my podcast something on the edge of darkness vanished vanished at the edge of dark okay good 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 okay i thought i wrote it down we should make a note to put in your trailer because it's a fucking it was a good trailer you put it together and it came out really well yeah but you recorded it it was uh it was lovely all right i got that jotted down yeah so um yeah so as i hear the growl i think you do the the classic thing where you know i'm sort of not like you know i'm just sort of like hey billy let's you know and i got like a you know a fatherly hand on her shoulder like hey let's head inside it's cold And she's Uh a little groggy from being asleep. And um, when the growl stops, uh, starts, you know, we hear the growl and we both freeze and she goes from groggy to adrenaline and we both sort of whip our head around. Mm -hmm. And it takes us, we we sort of freeze, like we don't know how to react. And um, we're sort of planted there for a moment. I don't know if you want something to happen or then do we just recover and run in. Yeah, maybe you recall that um, you might remember Wayne. He's wearing a sheriff's outfit, and he came in and mentioned... You met Wayne, right? Yes, yeah. It was one of the last things that happened. That uh, he he was looking into a bear that had been getting into the dumpster. Okay. I think he mentioned that last session. Uh, he said something about like, oh, I just got away when he came in without knowing okay. he was there. So, oh, you didn't get a chance to talk to him. Well, right. spoiler alert. Okay. Yeah. So you don't remember that. Okay. But yeah, you guys kind of snap back together. You don't hear anything else as you kind of stand there. You stand there and there's the red glow of the motel sign. And then, like I said, across the, um, there's kind of like a green space between you and the convenience station. And you just, there's that one light that shines down on the gas pumps and then there's nothing else. It's just darkness. And the only noise you hear is the sound of uh, the freezing rain, which is maybe slowing a little bit, but it's still, um, you know, misting a good amount. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So maybe it sounds like we might have time to sort of snap back to our senses, you know, after we freeze and we just sort of watch the darkness to see if there's any movement, you know, maybe I say, Hey, Billy, let's head inside. And, uh, yeah. And she, she's cold because she was sleeping in the car and you left the car off and she's got a jacket on. Of course she, she came prepared. Uh, yeah. Did, did you mention a cup of coffee? Yeah. Yeah. There's coffee. There's food waiting for us. Come on in. And, uh, yeah. I guide her in. 
you walk inside and all four of the people that were in there are in the exact same position they were in but they've all they're all just looking at you like they were all almost I mean not almost but they were all just biding their time until you came back in and the woman at the bar she she kind of turns around and goes back to her stuff and Father Fred settles into a booth. Remember, he was kind of dabbing at a at a right. stain. Right. And uh, Sheriff Wayne takes up a spot at the bar. Okay. And uh, well, Otis kind of, oh, uh, I think that pot of coffee's ready. Uh, how you doing, miss? My name's Otis. And Billy, you know, uh, hi. Uh, yeah, I'd love a cup of coffee. Warm up. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, I say, hey, you know, if it's no trouble, I'll take a cup as well. Because I yeah, I probably still have a half-finished pint glass of scotch and uh, fizzy water. But I think it's time to switch to coffee. Nice. Uh, miss, can I, can I make you anything? Um, yeah, and... And she, um, because he was he was cooking burgers in the back, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I imagine, like, when he slides them in front of us, she sort of gives it a look, and then that's when I remember she's vegan. Mm. And um, I'm just like, but she's you know she's not gonna make a like a big stink, but she um, she's like, oh, just some ketchup for the fries, and um, because I realize that's all she's gonna be able to eat. And you, so you dump your fries, maybe, or she just like, maybe she's used to this. She plops her burger in your basket and like scoops out your fries. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and she dips, she dips the fry. And, and remember Otis was back there for a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. And she kind of turns to you and just like picks up her napkin and is just like, <laughs> and uh, spits the fry. And you're holding a burger. You're hungry. Do you bite into it after seeing that? Um, yeah, maybe I was actually half in my mouth when she does uh-huh. that. And I just, and I chomp down. I'm, I'm yeah. and it's too late. So you you bite into the bun, the sesame seed bun. And, and uh, maybe there's uh, some vegetables on there, but there's like not lettuce. Maybe there's like just onion, uh, <laughs> cheese, and pickles. Uh, so no, no tomato, no lettuce. He didn't ask you what you wanted. Right. And you bite through the warm cheese and you bite through the warm burger. And then all of a sudden you just hit very soft, very cold inside of the burger. Oh, uh, it's like, and still... as you pull back, you look and it is just stone rare in the middle. Yeah. I, um, is Otis right there? Or did yeah. he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of go, hmm. And then I put it down and I pick up my napkin to wipe it and I try and do it as subtly as I can, but I try and spit it out as well. Mm hmm. I don't uh, know. Billy says, My fries are frozen. I'm like, Yeah. Uh, burgers in the same boat. Uh, maybe the coffee's. Maybe the coffee will get us through. And I, I take a sip, sort of bracing for impact. So it's in a it's in a white diner mug. Okay. You know? And you go to lift it up and you start to sip it. And it's hot, it's warm, mm. and it's steaming. And it feels good in your hands after going outside. But through the brown murky coffee water, you can see the bottom of the cup. Ugh. Meaning it is very weak. Yeah. Well, in order to help Otis save a little face, I take a sip because I'm like, you know what? I can get a mouthful down. And it's not it's not like rancid or anything like that. It's just weak coffee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz he he clearly has Which shown is cardinal fucking sin. <laughs> right. He's going to die. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's just clearly shown he doesn't have any idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And so I take a sip and I'm like, hmm, and I put it down and uh, I I look back across the room. And I say, oh, Father, do you have any luck with that stain? Did the uh, seltzer water help at all? Oh, oh your, your advice was much appreciated, but uh, I did what I could. I'm, I'm sure uh, the cleaning staff will, will see to it. Thank you. Mm. 
Yeah, sometimes uh, that that concoction doesn't always work. Well, it depends. What was it again? What was the stain again? Uh, wine. Wine. I <laughs> clumsy old hands. Mm, mm. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes wine doesn't come out like that. All right. Well. So. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So I keep looking around. Mm hmm. And. Uh, finally, I just everybody is everybody still looking at us like we're the weird ones in the room. Uh, Otis has like started just kind of futzing with things and Claire and Wayne are talking to each other and Father Fred maybe maybe comes up to you. Okay. And finally I Hello, just Oh so, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. And I'm like, you know, Father, I was just curious, like as we were coming in the in the in the room, did you hear what we heard? No. Uh Wayne, did you hear anything when you're out there? And Wayne kind of looks up from his conversation with Claire, and it takes him a second. And this is when he'll say, Oh, yeah, a bear's been getting into the dumpster out back. Uh, that's why I was out there. I was taking a look. We heard a we heard a bang earlier. Is that what you heard? And I look to Billy, and um, I try and give her the signal if there's like somebody like hey start recording oh nice um or maybe like under the table like i'm trying to hand her my zoom recorder or something maybe she has her own i don't know um but i'm trying to let her know like it's on and uh and i i'm like no i didn't hear a bang i i heard a growl now above the table i'm from the pacific northwest uh -huh. Would I be able to distinguish? Oh, that did kind of sound like a bear. I was like, that was no, that was no bear. It wasn't a bear. Okay. It, it wasn't. If anything, you're getting mountain lion vibes mm -hmm. or uh, cougar vibes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Log lady. Go makes on. Another appearance. <laughs> we still don't feel good about this, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Maybe that would be the, like the closest to the noise you heard. Okay. Uh, okay. So it yeah, definitely so sounded Wayne, animal. Wayne says, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it could have been a bear. Could have been a mountain lion. Don't worry. I looked around. I'm sure it was just something out, out in the trees. <laughs> just don't go wandering off too far. No, no. In fact, we're actually still trying to figure out if there's rooms available. Oh, yeah. Otis uh, Otis comes over and he he looks at your your food Oh, folks, I'm, I'm awfully sorry about that. Look, the least I can do is is offer you a room for the night, and it's on me. I, you know, it's it's not my area of expertise. I'm I'm best at front of house. Maybe I can, uh, you know, make it up to you by by giving you a nice, comfortable bed for tonight. Oh, that's very kind. If, and we're not trying to impose, but you know, if, if it's possible to get two rooms, that you know, I'd like you know, Billy here to have her own space. Uh, you know what? I'll put you up in something nice. Uh, it'll be together though. And I look at Billy and, um, you know, she can wave this off if she wants. Um, Billy just kind of shrugs. Okay. I mean, you know, maybe this isn't the first, like we're working for an impoverished public right. radio station. Maybe we've yeah, and you've to... never tried anything or anything no, like that. No. She, she's very comfortable with you. You're comfortable with her. Um, and you look outside, though, or you, or maybe you recall, um, there was one SUV out out parked outside. Okay. And I think there was a sedan. Okay. Uh, yeah, because, again, I think I said this in the last session. Like, I've started to go a little bit into paying attention mode. Uh-huh. Um, and so I just check. Are, are the plates in state? You'd have to go outside to look. Oh, okay. So they're not visible from the... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um... And then maybe is Otis walking over to the rack of keys or something to. Yeah. So like if you were to walk in the front doors, you'd be standing at the front desk. And then it's kind of like um, to the left. If you if you walk in to the left is this bar area that you're in and it's kind of open floor plan, but it's got like the old Western, like like half wall with wooden pillars okay. going up. Um, so it's open, but there's kind of this half wall in between. And so he comes out from behind the bar and he starts heading over to the front of the house. Okay. Are you following him or are you going to stay here and talk to anyone else? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to follow him for one particular reason. Um, yeah. 
so I'll sort of like, you know, like, oh yeah, and sort of like, you know, drum a little bit on the on the countertop, like I'm just passing time. But I don't know if this is a thing. Do hotels have to like display like some kind of license or like certification from you know an agency or something that says they've passed inspection or that sure. they? I just want that. I want to just see if Otis's name is actually on the paperwork that they might have to hang on. The oh wall. shit. Okay. Um, nice. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Can I see the you... name? Why does it even you... matter? Uh, no, I don't mean it. Maybe it matters. Okay. I won't say it doesn't matter. Why don't you give me a, let's use some mechanics. Why don't you give me a dexterity check? Okay. Uh, nice. We're going to roll some dice. I succeed with the 12. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So like what? And what that the reason I'm doing dexterity is like how you're positioning your body. Um, like you're keeping it cool, you lean against the counter, and as he's going through the keys, maybe you kind of peer over and you see it. And the name on the the license is um you you kind of see the the first name, maybe it's James, maybe Jim, but the last name is Redding. Redding, okay. Redding, is that a name I've heard at all this evening? Anybody that's in, like... Tonight? No. Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, maybe how big a sports fan is <laughs> is Don? Uh, maybe he follows the Mariners a little bit, but it's not a religion to him. Yeah. Uh, you recall an, an old athlete, an old ball player, Robert Redding. Okay. But... Okay. Um. All right, so... And now am I watching Otis fumble for figuring out how to book me in? Cause he clearly. No. So this is old school. Um, okay. it's got the, uh, <laughs> it's got a uh, Hunter green keys. Nice. Um, and he will pull, he pulls off the key to, uh, how closely are you paying attention to him? Uh, Again, it's one of those things I'm trying to make it look like I'm not, but I'm trying to yeah. pay very close attention to him. Yeah. Uh, he grabs the key to room. Uh, one. Room one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I take the key. Yeah, he, he holds on to the key. Oh. Um, actually, so he takes one and he turns around. And he's like, oh. Uh, well, you know, um, if you want to grab your bags, how about I, uh, how about I escort you to your room? I'll, I'll give you a little tour of the property. It's not, it's not much, but I'd be happy to show you around. It's, it's really the least I can do. Uh, and I look at Billy. Uh huh. And um, Billy is over in the bar, and she's talking to Father, uh, Father Fred. Okay. Um. So maybe, if, I don't know if she was able to do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my pocket, I'm going to activate my recorder. Okay. And then what I'm going to do... Uh, let's say she is. Like, maybe she gave you a little wink or something. So she's recording over in the bar, and maybe you have one as well. Okay. And um, so what I do is, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then I go back over to Billy, and I'm making it look like I'm about to take one more sip of coffee. Uh-huh. Uh, but actually, I spill it toward, like, the over the bar into the floor area behind. And so then I'm like, oh shit. And I like, I, I try and grab paper towels or something. And I start, oops, bang my mic. I start mopping it up. And while I'm doing that, I try and stash my recorder underneath the bar. Oh, where, nice. Where it might not get seen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I won't even, I, I like that. Like, um, like it's got the the tray of like where you'll have maraschino cherries, lemons, limes, cocktail napkins, and the straws, and you're able to wedge it in kind of in in one of those things with the mic pointed up, so it's it's not covered up by napkin or anything like that. But yeah, you get it in there. Nice. Okay. And then I'm like, well, Billy, do you wanna do you wanna try and uh, get a little rest? Yeah, I'm exhausted. Um, Sheriff, do you know how long or? You check in, see how the roads are. And he's like, ah, I'm off duty. I don't, I don't have my radio with me. <laughs> um, which I think, in and of itself, I think Billy and I would find that strange. 
Um, or would Billy's we? not aloof, but Billy's tired. Uh, Billy's okay. tired. Billy's cold. Billy is now extra hungry. Um, she ate your pickles. Hmm. Feeling those were relatively safe. Like you notice, like your burgers have been dismantled. She's she's gone ahead and eaten your pickles. Okay. Um, so you notice Billy, like just kind of rolls her eyes, and she's like, "I've I've got my my overnight bag." Like she doesn't need to get her big suitcase or anything like that. Okay. Uh, then yeah, I, I grab my stuff and I let um, Otis lead the way. All right. So Otis walks you down, and um, just as a reminder. The hotel is shaped like a horseshoe. So the main building you're in is the lobby and the bar and maybe the ice machine, things like that. Um, and where you park, there's that central grass area. And then there's three rooms on the west side of the parking lot. The lobby is on the north side. And on the east side, there's probably about five rooms. And you see on the west, the rooms are numbered one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. And Otis takes you over there. And he says, well, we're going to put you up in our uh, our best room tonight. I think you'll find it the most comfortable. And he opens the door to room two. Okay. And so, Okay. Yep, go ahead. So he, he was originally going to do one, but he skipped over it and changed his mind to give us two. Um, was that sort of like, did he, was it a thing that I noticed that he picked one first or is it always two and I'm overthinking? So he passes you the key. Okay. And uh, if you need anything, don't uh, don't hesitate. And I'll be I'll be in the lobby, um, and my place is right behind there. Uh, you can call, of course, um, but you should find the accommodations warm, everything comfortable, everything you need should be in here, and I'll leave you to it. Okay. And he leaves, and the door locks behind you. Uh, like we're locked in. Like if you were to go, yeah. Hmm. And you turn and you take an inventory of the room, and you quickly realize that he has placed you and Billy in the honeymoon suite. Okay. There's faded red striped wallpaper with dim lighting there's a king size waterbed <laughs> on the on the far side of the room there's a sunken seating area there's a couch that you assume will pull out yeah there's a modern uh some modern conveniences someone has hung a, a modern television or uh installed a modern television i guess it's not a, it's not a flat screen okay right because we're in uh what do we say we said 97 Something like that, yeah, yeah. No, 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 are we doing, wait. Oh, wait, no, 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 it was modern, it was just me. No, it's asked. modern. Yeah, It's yeah. modern, that's right, sorry. Fall Delta Green, Delta Green, we said 97. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's modern. Um, yeah, because all the podcast shit. Um, there's a high, too highly mounted flat screen TV. So, like, if you're sitting down in the sunken area, like, you'd have to be. <laughs> um, and then there's a heart-shaped, heart-shaped tub with uh, blower jets in <laughs> the separate area. Um. Nice. Yep. Okay. I'm like, well, you know, Billy, if you want the water bed, it's yours. And I go and work on the couch and check to see if it pulls out. Yeah. Yeah. You do find a pull out couch. It's it's a little cramped in like this little like it barely fits in like the recessed area. You also see there's a separate bathroom with a wooden door. Um, it's got gaudy tile. It's cramped. Uh, there's double vanity, toilet, shower, all that stuff. Nice. Um. But you feel a breeze, a chill come in from the bathroom and kind of sweep down into the seating area. And you hear the sound of, of freezing rain um, drift in from an open window. Okay. Um, I... Uh, I'm going to... So I know the window's open in the bathroom. Is the door ajar? Is it... The bathroom door? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, okay. you, you were just sitting down by the couch, and you kind of look up over there, and you kind of take an inventory of what's in there, which is just, like I said. Just a normal bathroom. So when I turn on the light, I just see the windows open. Uh, is it a big window, small window? Like, is it? Uh, big. Like, enough enough that you could fit through. If I wanted to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe that's what I do. I'm like, Billy, um, 
You know, if anybody knocks, make it sound like I'm here, okay? What? Hey, wait, hold on. Don, I have something to... Before you... Wait, what? What? I'm like, what? what? Oh, okay, I'm half out the window. I'm like, wait, what is it? Well, first off, where are you going? Second off... Hey, I just thought you should know. I was talking about Father Fred. He just spent a few weeks up in cold water. I guess he's, like, retired and he was doing, like, a visiting precinct. I don't know. But... Like, I want to talk to him some more. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I was he was telling me a little bit about that, but I felt like I wasn't having any luck getting him to talk about it. He just sort of glossed over it and was telling me well, he was headed back. Don, sometimes it takes a, a certain <laughs> level of charm. And I I bristle, but I also know, like, again, I've been accused of being stiff. Um, well, but you also know it's funny with Billy because she's, like, the super sar- sarcastic hmm. and, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like kind of punky, grungy college kid. Okay. Like she's wearing a flannel and torn up jeans and she hates the man and all that stuff. <laughs> and she's full of sarcasm. Uh, so she usually doesn't have a lot of charm. Okay. Um, why are you going out the window? What's, what's going on? You're muted. I quickly fill her in. Um, And I'm like, look, something's weird here. Otis is acting like he owns the place. He he doesn't know what he's doing. No shit. Um, I'm starving. Yeah, I don't think he actually owns the place. When I walked in, it's like I walked into the middle of a conversation that was about me. And they all shut up immediately and looked at me like, hmm. "Hmm." So I'm like, something's going on here. That stain that the priest was cleaning up isn't from tonight. I don't know why the pantsuit woman keeps looking at me with daggers in her eyes. I don't know what the cop's doing, but he was here before and there was a conversation going and he was walking in, assuming I wasn't here and started talking about something that got away before he could get there. I don't know what it was. So I think there's something going on here and I think it's worth figuring out. Um, Above the table, did you see me place my recorder? Uh, No, but she's like, well, I've, like she pulls her recorder out. She's like, "Should we, should we record a segment?" Uh, you know what? That might not be a bad idea. Um, and then I get distracted from. I was about to go outside, but I'm all like, "Yeah, yeah." <clears throat> <clears throat> Here, um, and she looks around, and there's a, there's sliding mirrors, and they slide open to like a closet, and it's got like the luggage rack thing in it, and maybe it's got a safe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's like, "All right, this is gonna have to do." And she steps in there and then she starts to slide the door and then she pokes her head out. She's like, are you coming in? And I'm like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I grab like a, I grab the comforter off the, off the bed uh-huh. and we're going to put it over our heads to help dampen. I assume it's to like close. This is totally normal stuff for you guys to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's totally thinking like, this is where we need to record in here. Yeah. So we put the thing over our head to help dampen the sound and, you know, keep reverberations from coming. And, um, and so we're like, hey, so what, what, what do you think? I mean, we're on our way to cold water, but do we, is this part of the cold water story? Do we make it like its own thing, just record it on the side and just keep it in our pocket? How do you want to, we're sort of bouncing ideas off of each other. Yeah. And she pulls out a laptop and she pulls out a little, like, my, like she starts getting to work mm-hmm. and she's like, Don, you're the, you're the face. You're the face, baby. Right, 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 <clears throat> right, <clears throat> right, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, These like, are all the things we do right before we record, too. <laughs> this is exactly what we do, yeah. <laughs> My waddle. The rain in Spain. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> um, Royal Theater of London vocal training. Um, so we, uh, I get ready, I'm like, you know, and I start to, like, take one. And I'm like, the town of Coldwater has stories that go back but our story I'm like no okay no that's okay that doesn't that's not it okay um okay hold on let's let's try this take two it's not just the town of cold water where things seem to awry it's oddness permeated outward like a ground zero nope nope we can't okay um and and probably <laughs> like- Billy's like oh my god because she's probably seen me fumble 
And she so, was fine with the first take, but now she's just like <laughs> right, right. And so I sort of get distracted doing that for a little while without realizing like twenty minutes pass, and <laughs> and uh, like everything I was about to go do is completely vacated uh, my head. Um, and you guys are under this warm comforter, and it's dark. Like yeah. only a little bit of light com- comes in. Like you only have the doors cracked so much. And you look over, and like over the hum or the blue glow of the laptop, you see Billy's just like asleep, and like the recording <laughs> software is running, and she's just like, she's out. And you, and then with that, like I sort of, you know, I reach over the screen and I hit the space bar or whatever to stop the recording. Ah, uh-huh. I'm like, look, Billy, huh, B- Billy? Yeah. Did we get it? We did. We did. Thank you. Why don't you? Uh, I just climb into bed. Don't even get changed. You're exhausted. Just go right to sleep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, she's kind of like closes the laptop, kind of tosses it um, into one of the sitting chairs. And uh, she's like, oh, I, I at least got to brush my teeth. I don't think I'll ever get the, the taste of frozen french fries out of my mouth. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Just give me one sec. Let me just... Uh, the window is open in there. Let me just make sure it's not too slippery. Like it what? didn't get all wet all over the floor. I know it's weird. The window's open. And so I just sort of push the door open. And I sort of like look in the shower, like, you know, make sure something weird's not happening. I'm not taking a shower, Don. No, no, I know, I know. It's just, you know, it was ice coming in. I, I want to make sure the floor didn't get... Mm. Okay, well, thanks for being shivers, but I can walk across the bathroom floor. Thanks. Okay. And she starts brushing her teeth. Okay. And she kind of turns and she just looks at you like, what are you doing? And then, oh, sorry, go ahead. And before you can, like, turn and walk away or give her space, you hear a very loud clanging noise from outside through the open window coming from the direction of the convenience store the gas station with a single light yeah well yeah that's just the setup got it uh it. i mean that's just like the nighttime it illuminates the gas pumps but like the the storefront is all darkness and the garage attached to it all darkness okay um what the fuck was that yeah i i like and i stick my head out can i see anything no. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I have my phone at the ready, and I sort of like look down and turn on the flashlight, but I keep it against my leg, and I just listen some more because mm-hmm. it sounded like it was a little far away, right? It sounded like it was from the convenience store. There's a there's a large green patch, grass patch between uh, uh, like a drainage ditch between you and the convenience store, but it's you know, okay. It's just right there. But- oh, then maybe I um. I, I'm about to hold out my flashlight, and and I see if it's it's bright enough to see anything. No, I mean there's still like, uh, it's right there, but right there in the sense of like, there's still a good, I don't know, twenty feet at okay. least thirty, like two widths of a room, so twenty or thirty feet between you and the garage, and then the convenience stores on the other side of that, and that's just the, so like you shine your light out there, but the, like, you know. You see grass and then the. So part of my equipment is an LED light for shooting video. Oh, nice. Um, I'm like, one sec, one sec. And um, mm-hmm. I go and I hook that up. And I see if that's bright enough to see anything. Um, We can say it is, but as you kind of pan across, um you kind of you light up this kind of drainage ditch between you and, and the other side and then you just kind of sweep across the first you hit the side of the garage and as you you pan your light across you see it kind of lights up there's you know two big rolling doors there and you kind of sweep across the glass storefront um and you see you see a sign that says right and ready but no, you don't really see anything else. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm like, okay. All right. 
Man. You see like one or two pine trees, you know, just like a rant. Like not, it's not like dense. It's not woods or anything like that, but there's some trees here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to listen for another moment to see if I hear any other noises or if it, that was a one time. Oh, let's say you hear it again. It, and it sounds like it's, um, it's hard to place. Maybe something falling over in the garage. Maybe something falling over in the right and ready. Uh, it sounds like it's indoors, but it's very loud and you, and you can hear it from here. Okay. I I go and I double check and make sure we're locked in. Like I I try and open the door. Yeah, you go over and you you try and open the door. And the and you can't. And you put the key in. And all of this this whole setup is it's not a bad place. It's just old. And so even the locks are a little antiquated. You put the key in, and you need the key to get in or out once it's locked. Okay. And obviously the key does not work. And had you told Billy about the key? Uh, no. No, I hadn't noticed that yet. Um, so I just want to Don, double what check. What the fuck? Yeah, oh, go ahead. just to double check. Did he give me the key to room one, but gave us room two? Is that the Yeah, answer? so then you look down. You know, you saw him take the room one key. Right. You look down, and you see in white paint on the on the hunter green room tag number one and I yeah now that's what I, I tell Billy I'm like look Billy like I was telling you something's going on here they've locked us in we can't get out and they did it deliberately what the fuck Don let me see the key and uh, I sort of flip it in my hand and hand it to her she tries it she tries it, she tries it, she tries it, and then she's banging on the door. What the fuck? I'm like, I know, right? Like, something's going on here. Um, I've got my recorder going in the lounge. I don't know if they're all still there talking. Can I, is there like a, is there a window to like the, you said it was like shaped like a horseshoe. Can we see like the parking lot? You can see the parking lot. Okay, are yeah. all, all the cars still there? Yeah, yeah, you see your car, you see the red sedan, you see the SUV, and you see the sheriff's deputy vehicle okay i'm like look um billy so yeah we're stuck in here and um i think i need to go outside through the window and after i go outside through the window i want you to close it behind me wait what you want me to stay in here where i'm locked in and not go with you and i sort of look at her i'm like i mean you just heard that right like do you want to go outside with that yeah but that could be anything but what the? F what is this shoulders bullshit, Don? Since when do we do stuff separately? Okay, and yeah. She's like, plus, you don't have your recorder, and she holds up hers. And I'm like, shit. She's right about that. I'm like, can I borrow it? No. No. Okay. You want to go outside? Yes. All right. Let's 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 head out. And uh, yeah, we slide through the uh, through the window. Hey, Don, should I check to make sure the bathroom floor is not too slippery before you go in there? <laughs> I'm like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I deserve that. Um, I just wanted to make sure with the window open, somebody wasn't in here. I sort of copped to what I was actually doing, but um, she feels a little guilty. Well, th thank you, but yeah, you but should I, know by now. I can take care of myself. Right. I shouldn't. Um, I shouldn't pander. You're right. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So now, do you need to boost me? Do you do you need me to boost you through the window? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do need to stretch a little so I don't pull something. <laughs> um, yeah, I sort of like slither out and probably, you know, I, I go head first and it's it's not a it's not a pretty exit when I, you know, I sort of then tip and I put my hands down and then I fall. You know, it's not a clean hmm. exit um, unless you want me to roll and see how quiet it is. No, I, I like it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little in you. uh you stumble, you fall to maybe one knee or something like that. And immediately, like you're wearing jeans, right? Yeah. That's the worst feeling in the world. Like your jean is off, like instantly around your knee, just soaked. Yeah. Maybe a little muddy now. And just, now you have, you have soggy knee jean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, And yeah, I turn to make sure the same doesn't happen to Billy if she wants a hand. If she doesn't, I'll. Yeah, she'll take your hand. I mean, she's like, she's giving you a hard time, but she's like, yeah. So I, anyone yeah. would take that situation. Yeah. Uh, so, nice. yeah. 
we're outside and um, I have my phone at the ready in case I need a flashlight. Okay. Um, but for the moment, I'm going to try and go, try and go dark uh, after hearing all that noise. Billy uh, extends the recorder to you. I'm like, okay. First, let's, um, I just want to see if I can peek into the lounge, see if they're all talking. No, Don, no. maybe you should say something. The show. Oh, 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 you're right. You're right. Um, I'm like, you don't have you. You can if you want, but yeah, no, no. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to. Okay. In the dark of night on the edges of cold water. Sounds emanate from a nearby building. And people are acting strangely. Now, what do you think? Maybe tell them about the fact we're locked into a room. Oh, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Strangers came together at, at the uh, at the at the inn. Behavior not making sense, which led us to being locked into our room against our will, forcing us to escape through an open window to in investigate the dark secrets that they're talking about. Oh, God, that's too. OK, that's over the top, right, Billy? You think that's too much? <laughs> <laughs> just just forget it. Okay. All right. Um and she 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 just talks into the microphone and she's like she just like fucking just states the facts like all right, we're outside. We just crawled through our window. Apparently, um the owner locked us in our room and we can't get out any other way. <laughs> right. Because she knows how a podcast is actually made. It's all written after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> you don't write it in the moment. <laughs> Um, like, you know, okay. And I sort of come back to my senses and, uh, I'm like, good, good. Thanks for doing that. Um, let's see if we can. And then I'm like, you know, and then I sort of grab her wrist. I'm like, yeah, we're going to go see, I've got my recorder hidden in the, in the room. And, uh, I'm going to go see if the four people are still talking, see if it's any different. They, they were acting strangely when I walked in. Just mm. want to see if I can tell if they're still sort of acting strangely now that we're out of the room. Okay. So you're heading back to the lobby. Quickly, just to sort of see if I can peek through a window. Yeah. Okay. Um, the windows are like an old, it's not like one giant window. Okay. And they're kind of like, maybe they're like individual squares, but they're like, they're um, not translucent. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then okay. there's it's it's like very decorative, like they are form over function, and the fact that you really can't see inside. You do not hear voices. Remember when you first came up, you could hear them talking inside. Okay, uh, but you don't hear anything. Also, remember the door was locked when you first tried to open it. Right, right. Okay, um, but you don't hear anything, and you can't really see anything. Like you, maybe you could like if if people were walking in front of the mirror or, or not mirror. The window, you maybe be able to see something, but like right now, you can't really make anything out. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're up against the glass, and I'm, I'm not hearing anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, like, okay. Like you up for investigating what that noise was next door? Yeah. And then we can hopefully go to bed and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. So Don, I, okay. Don, why yeah. don't we just leave? Well, I mean, you want to just get out of here? I guess the roads, uh, they might still be a little icy, though. You want to just go? What kind of, you drive a little, was it a Prius or was it something else? It was a, Golf? like a 2004 Honda Civic. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, when's the last time you changed your tires? <laughs> 2004. Like, hey, look, when, when they go bald, I throw a new one on. I, I couldn't tell you when that last was. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she probably drives a nicer car than I do because maybe like she has a little bit of help from her parents or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I fucking knew we should have brought my Subaru. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, I just, I'm just, right. yeah. Let's go take a, take a look. At least if it's locked, we'll know, like, I don't know. I don't even want to think about that. Maybe it was just a mix up. Okay. Um, all right. So 
I'm going to go around like sort of the outside of the building. And uh, are there any other windows that might be open? You're on the back side of your rooms? Yeah. Any other bathroom windows that might have been open like ours no. was? Okay. No, I'll say they're not open. Uh, I just try them just in case they're unlocked. The windows? No. Okay. Can, okay. You can kind of like peer inside. Oh, well, no, you no, you can't peer inside. That'd be weird. Not when they're, not when they're closed, though. No. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you can look in. <laughs> He's... <laughs> You see Father Fred, he's taking a massive dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, an old man from Twin Peaks. Right, for the listeners, there's a big thumbs up. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I'm i like, okay, and I sort of start heading over to the the gas station next door. Uh-huh. And um, I just take you, a... Oh, sorry. You start to like descend down into this drainage area and like it catches you off guard a little bit even though you saw it and you forgot about it mm -hmm. and you stumble a little bit and it's like uh here like water collects and you see like a you see like a storm pipe um kind of back towards the the lobby so off to your right and uh you kind of slosh through here so it's muddy it's wet your shoes, you know, your Chuck Taylors got soaked or whatever you have on. Mm, yeah. Um. It's yeah, and that's also a terrible feeling. Um, oh yeah, to go with the wet knee jeans. Um. So I'm just like, your oh, thighs shit. are starting. To, your thighs are starting to chafe a little bit against <laughs> the the jean fabric. Uh huh. And I'm just like, fuck, <laughs> true horror. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I break. <laughs> pants are off. I just rip my pants off. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, when I step into the water, I'm like, oh shit! And I tr and I'm realize I just made a bunch of noise. I'm soaked, and I just sort of freeze for a minute, and see if that caused any like, did something clang or something in response to me being an idiot? No, but like Billy is like trying to like shake the water off her shoes. Oh, fuck, that is just the worst. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, and, uh, I guess, yeah, then I guess I make my way up the other side and against the wall of the, uh, the garage. Hmm. Okay. So you're up against the, so it's the, the garage is the, I guess you can't see my hands. The garage is here and then right up against it is the convenience store. Um, you don't hear anything. Okay. Um, Okay. So you're on the east side of these buildings. So to the north is the back side. The south is the front of both the garage and the convenience store. And again, as you kind of look around the corner and stuff, it's just that one light shining down um, over the gas pumps. And as you look back towards the inn, um, it's just darkness other than like over the building, you see like red glow emanating from the, the inside. Okay. Does it look like there's still light coming from... Am I able to see if there's still light coming from the main lobby of the inn? Yeah, but it's not like... It's not like pouring out. So, um, again, it's like... We used to go to this restaurant when I was a kid, and it was all wood paneling and wood decor, and that's how I envisioned it with, like, dim lights okay. as, like, a design choice. So it's not... Even if all the lights were on, it wouldn't be, like fill in the whole area so there is some light coming yeah uh if you kind of look back there maybe it's shooting out the back or something like that but on the back side of the lobby is the owner's residence which you don't see any lights coming from that mm, okay well clearly i'm guessing that otis is not the owner mm. uh, am i able to get to the owner's residence and like peek in a window yeah so like yeah but it's all the way back across oh. the drainage ditch and like yeah so, like, yeah, you could get back there for sure. Like, you can kind of see... Now that you've put some distance between you... Like, you're not right up against the building. You can now kind of see beyond the main lobby building. And you know, he had mentioned, like, oh, I, I just stay right there. Um, and so you can kind of see the the couple rooms, it appears to be, that's attached to, to the back side of the lobby. Okay. Maybe I, I sort of make a note of that on a way back to take a look. Uh, and I try and make my way to the front of the convenience store. Uh-huh. And um, I just try and 
see if I can see in any of the front windows there. Probably the bigger windows. Yeah, so it's it's got big windows. Like I said, it's called the Right and Ready. Um, it's got, you know, big glass windows. You see a front door. There's a closed sign hang up. You, you kind of peer in and you see neat rows of shelves. Mm -hmm. And they run. It's like you're looking at a shelf running horizontally the length of the convenience store. You can kind of see maybe there's rows behind it. Um, you see that there's like a door. Maybe there's like one light or like a light eliminating from the fridges or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, the front door you would expect to see at like any kind of 7-Eleven or something like that. Yeah, just a, I'm assuming the outcome, but I check it just to make sure it's locked. Yeah, it's locked. Um, do I notice anything from that faint bit of light that would have indicated that would have made the sound that I heard, like some shelf knocked over anything? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you do see something like that. Okay. Maybe you see, you know, like, you, you pull on the handle and then you do the whole, like, put your face on the glass. And you're kind of peering in and you look and maybe you kind of see, like, some stuff has rolled into the like from one of the aisles like up into the area between the aisles and the register like you see stuff on the ground okay. and otherwise like this is a fully stocked place it's not like we're not in the middle of nowhere like this place gets business right um but there's stuff on the ground from one of the aisles you can't really make out what it is but yeah okay you get some kind of disturbance maybe uh so yeah i guess I guess um, I'm just going to do a quick loop around the building to see if there's any other doors, any other windows that are open, broken, any doors that are open, unlocked. Yeah, there is a uh, there's a back door. Um, mm -hmm. So as you walk around, you see that there is a back door. And as you walk past the garage, like you walk past the bay door. Um, but then you get to the back of the buildings and you see a door to the garage and then you see a door to the right and ready. And then also back there is a tow truck. Okay. Uh, the tow truck. Um, I do a quick thing. I, I sort of check to see if the tow truck's unlocked. I feel the hood to see if it's warm. Like, was it just running? It's not warm. Um, it is unlocked. Okay. You open up the door and then it's got the the stale smoke of uh, or the stale, stale scent of cigarette smoke kind of pours out of it as you open the door or as you put your head in. Okay. Uh, just quickly check to see if there's is there like a flashlight in there? Uh, sure. Yeah. There's okay. Probably. Yeah, because <laughs> there's my... road yeah, there's road flares. <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I, I just grab a flashlight because I, I've got oh. my phone, but that's going to kill my battery. Uh, it's not that bright. Um, it's a big old mag light. Hey, not bad. All right. Uh, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to sort of click it, make sure it works. You know, sort of keep my hand over it a little bit so it's not like lightsabering. Nice. Um, uh -huh. And I just make sure it works. Yeah, it works. Cool. And then once I've got that, I sort of check the car just to see, is like, there anything? Obviously, I imagine it just smells like smoke and it's just tow truck yeah you pop the visor yeah you know you're feeling around you pop the visor down the keys drop down into your lap I'm like okay um i sort of make a note of it and i put him back up okay. uh knowing i and i leave the door unlocked and close it and um yeah i start to check the and, and sorry was there an unlocked door or anything to the garage yeah so right. maybe you check the garage back door first it's locked okay but you get and and back there as you kind of like peer in maybe it's you know it's a two-way bay and so you look in and you see that there's a lift system there's no car in there or anything like that but you have you know there's workbenches and tools and various car parts and whatnot and then you go over to the right and ready door and the door swings open on its hinges as if it's already been opened you turn on the flashlight or you still have the flashlight off? Um, I listen for a moment 
before I turn it on. I just sort of stop and get as still as I can. You're listening from outside? Yes. Okay. You don't hear anything, but as you turn on the flashlight, you quickly turn it off. Because if you pan up on the door, you see that it's bent and that it's scratched. Hmm. <laughs> and it's a door. Right. So it's like, it's not like just scratched a little bit or something like that. Like something has crashed into this thing or torn at it or done something to try to get it open. And it is now open. And it's as you as you kind of first first pushed on it, as you went to go check the handle, it kind of slid open. And then you like you pull your light out and you check it and then you real quickly shut your light off. Yeah. All right. And uh... <laughs> the door swings open Ooh. and inside you made this out to this is like the supply room in the back office. Like there's a there's a desk. Well, it, it doesn't matter. It's all fucking trashed. Like there's shit everywhere on the ground. Like something's thrashed about in here. Uh, I'm going to, but I didn't hear anything. So far, you haven't heard anything. Okay. I'm going to step back. Uh huh. And I'm going to go find Billy. Oh, Billy's like right there. Oh, she she was with me. And uh, how, um, I'm like Billy. I think uh, I think we need to get back inside. You see this, right? You know, and she's looking at the gash like in the, the door. Right and ready. Um, First, she says like in there, and then she looks at the. Oh, maybe that, maybe that happened a while ago, but it's not like the door's not rusted or like paint hasn't like, right. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, what do you think we should go in there? Oh no, sorry. I did. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know, Don. yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. Like we heard a crash a little while ago. I'm not hearing anything. Um, maybe it's that bear. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. Um, I'm like, I, I feel like if, if I, look, I just don't want you to get hurt. Shh, 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 shh. Listen. Ears to the ground. Yeah, we're both. Maybe you guys put your heads in a little bit. And if you listen very carefully, you hear a, a wet, squelching and scratching noise coming from the right and ready. Like. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I sort of signal to Billy. I'm like, let's, let's back up. Not verbally, but I'm like, move away. Yeah. And, um, I, I look around. Um, they trash whatever it is. Trash the door. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Is there anything that we could use to block? Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever I could block the door, but they'd probably just trash the other door. And get it out. Uh, and I'm like, okay. I, I think we gotta tell. I think we have to tell the uh, officer Wayne, um, what's going on in here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don. Whatever you think is best. Yeah. And so, I like I try and very quietly move away from the the mm -hmm. convenience store, not going back through the drainage ditch. I'm comfortable going across the front. Okay. And uh, feel like walking on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm making my way back to the front door, um, where you know we came in earlier. As you round the corner, it's like you're walking along the road, and then you you walk on the uh, the driveway, which makes like a big U mm -hmm. in in kind of the horseshoe design. You start walking along the driveway, and you get right past the the southwestern edge of the building. Right, you hear a a clang, like um like a thud of a door slamming, but like immediately bouncing off the door frame. Mm. And then you hear that growl again. <laughs> and, um, I, um, I look at Billy 
and I think we need to we we double time it a little bit more to get mm-hmm. to the front door of the hotel. So you're running across the parking lot, right? And then yeah. you, you get to you get to the lobby and you put your hand on the on the lobby door handle and you give it a twist and it swings open. Oh, it's unlocked. Interesting. It's unlocked. All right, is there anybody in that room? There's no one in the room. Okay. I'm like, "Okay, Billy, Billy, grab a key 2 from behind the desk." Okay, Billy. Billy runs behind, and she's going like she first. She's like looking at front, and then like she sees it over on the side. She's like, uh, eight, seven, six, five, three. Uh, it's not here. It's not here. Okay. All right. Uh, just grab any key. She grabs all the keys, <laughs> which are three through eight. Nice. And I lock the glass door if it's as it's going to do it as if it's going to do anything when we're inside. Well, no, it's not a glass door. Remember, there's oh, glass right. panels. It's it's a big like wooden like and carved kind of ornate door uh like solid solid oak door or something like that. right 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 so i lock that once we're in okay and then i run to the bar to grab my recorder nice um you grab it yeah and, and you grab it you do you hit stop no okay so you're leaving it recording yeah you grab it and you hear a voice And it's a whisper. It feels like it's right behind you. Shouldn't you check on your daughter? And then we'll fade to black. Very nice. Very nice. I'm just going to repeat what I said at the end of the lesson. Is this kind of the best kind of thing for role playing? <laughs> <laughs> like spooky investigations? Um, it, d- it's just so awesome. And again, I think some of it maybe it's better i don't know i don't know is it better to just have the the things the things you want to have happen and and some of this is pre-written some of this i'll I'll be honest like i I heard one thing in a a playthrough that i really liked Mm. um that i'll reveal at the end like where i got it from and stuff like that but like having that knowing that i want x to happen and just I can, I can make X happen. Jeez, my hair is going like all over the place above my fucking head right now. I don't know, I don't know what's going on with it. Um, like having X happen wherever is so liberating. And mm-hmm. I've done this before with Fear itself, uh, which was the very first RPG I ever ran. Mm. It, it was essentially a um, a house that was haunted, and when the players tried to leave, the the house literally picked their friend up and like threw the friend. And the whole point of them being there was saving their friend. And it would like fling their friend back into the house. Right. And like, I had these clues and I was still a novice. Like I didn't know this is what I was doing, but it's like, well, this, this encounter with this haunting can happen in the pool in the house. It could happen in the master bedroom. It can happen in the fire, like wherever. Um, And so it's, it's lib, it's daunting, you know, as we were talking before, like coming up with the ending because it's a little more loosey goosey here. Um, But it is also liberating that it's just like with how liminal horror is designed, you have this doom clock and the doom clock moves the story forward. Right. Um, And it makes, it keeps your players investigated. So there's some things that are happened that are scripted, right? But they're loose enough that I can script them and do with them what I want. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's kind of nice and I think makes for a better, more natural story, investigative story. I don't have to wait until you go open room eight or something like, why are you going to go over to room eight? And like, you can go check out room eight all the fuck you want. I'm going to tell you right now, don't go like there's nothing room eight, right? You know, (laughs) like, right. Maybe there's some in one of the other rooms, but like, you don't have to go room by room. But if you did start going room by room, like I can just move something over there and that's kind of nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, a little like peek behind the curtain. At one point, we had talked about doing a, um, and I hope we get to do this, especially because of games like Liminal Horror that we're running now. Uh, we were kicking around the idea of doing an RPG discussion about mysteries. Mm-hmm. And I hope we get all three of us on because I would love to just shoot the shit about it instead of tacking it on every time we finish a Liminal Horror setting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And our, well, I think. I think there's also an interesting topic or discussion to be had to put this in your, you start chewing on it. Cause I don't know if we'll get, we probably won't even get an answer when we talk about it, mm-hmm. but just the, 
finality of a mystery, I think is how I heard it described one time. Mm-hmm. And then when you start to think about that, like how does that, how does that hinder a mystery role playing game? Mm. You know, like there is, there is a definite, to a certain extent, there is a definite series of events that need to unfold to make the story take place. Right. Where that's not like present in like an action RPG, if that. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you need this, you need this, you need this. If we just go straight to the end, uh, you lose its charm. And I think that's challenging to pull off and right. playing a mystery. It's it's hard enough to write a mystery that's good that hits all those pieces and builds the tension. But now you got to play through that. And then you still have this certain like finality of it all. Like, um, especially when you're dealing with like horror stuff, like you're not right. going to beat Cthulhu. Right. Anyway. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. There's um uh, we don't have to get in because again I'd really love to deep dive. There's a distinction that some people attribute it to Scorsese. I don't know if it's correct or if he was the one who said it or if it's even an accurate use of the words. But somebody made a distinction. There's story and there's plot, and story is the way that the characters experience the plot. And I feel like mysteries mm-hmm. in an RPG can be tricky because as the GM, you've got to manage both. Um, There's the undercurrent of what's actually happening. But like you were saying, this game gives you the freedom to move the pieces around. Right. Um, But anyway, not to, but I I, I hope someday we get to just nerd out on that because whether or not I've got actually anything interesting to say, I I just love the idea so much. Yeah, no, I need to chew on it some more because, like, mm-hmm. I, that whole concept, I need to wrap my head around one. I need to wrap my head around it and then come up with some coherent thoughts mm-hmm. um, because I think they are a little bit problematic. Um, but if you can work through it, then I think it's incredibly rewarding. Yes. But also, I've been on the other side where it's like, maybe investigative ho- horror isn't what I want to play. But then we play something like this and it's like, this is good. I was going to say, you shut your mouth. And it's, it's not just our Call of Cthulhu game, because I know that's what we always right. use as an example. There's other things that I've played that's just like, well, I don't know about that. Yeah. No, I I, I, I definitely get that. Um, anyway, I, I mean, I, I all I can say is, again, I, I had a blast, because this good. might be kind of my favorite jam when it comes to RPGs. That's that's awesome to hear. I'm I'm having a lot of fun with it too. I know it was a shorter session tonight, but again, it was just coming in laser hot. But I think it's better to uh, one. I really wanted to play and get back to this, and some is better better than none. Usually, we go a full almost two hours of role playing, and we maybe got an, an hour of role playing in tonight. Um, but it was absolutely worth it, and we don't have uh, we don't have that much left. So yeah, and to be fair, that was a great stopping point. Yeah, right. That was the other thing. Like I had a few in mind, but again, it's. It's the flexibility of like well, one of those may not even come up, which is great. Yeah. Um, All right. That was good. I'm gl- I'm glad you're enjoying that because I think this is awesome as well. I don't know what's in it. Well, like we don't so far. We don't really need the game. No. Like we're just telling a story. <laughs> right. Well, and, and to that point, you know, I was skimming the rules before we, you know, it, it specifically says in the game, like, look. Like the information, all that kind of stuff, that has to be done through role playing. You're not supposed to check skills for interactions. It's only the physical stuff, Um, which is interesting. It could be, I imagine it could be daunting, but so far it's worked for us, I think, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's only three three stats you could roll anyway. So are you like, um, you know, one, if you're going to make a roll, you need to shoehorn into one of the stats, which you can do. Mm-hmm. And then two, it's like, um, like you putting the tape recorder in, like, sure. I could have rolled dexterity there. Right. Um, but I didn't, if you had failed, like what would I want to have happen? I think the interesting thing is you being able to place the recorder there. I think that makes for a much more interesting story than you getting caught placing or you dropping the recorder in a pitcher of iced tea, which we know you would have fumbled that roll art and that's exactly where it would have gone. Right. Um, and like, yeah, so I threw it in with when you're looking over the counter because it's like, well, I think whether like, I don't know, I just felt different about it. So now right. there will come a point we'll use like the HP system and the stress system and yeah, like that's coming. Trust me. Yeah. 
and and like I said last time, Liminal Horror is the time where I read an uh, uh, Into the Odd inspired rule set and realized, oh, this is why it's so mm. stripped down. Um, mm. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, I had a great time. I, I hope you've been enjoying running it because you. Oh yeah, it's been great. It's been a fun story to tell. Nice. Um, this is based off a movie that um we had talked about before, and playing it only makes me want to watch <laughs> that more which i think is safe for you to watch now um because now i think we're so far off so just just for the listener's sake um the two of the touchstones that stand out to this are twin peaks nice and the movie i'm talking about is bad times at the el royale which made oh, me right, good spooky right. season uh to watch which the touchstone there is things aren't what they seem at this hotel. Right. Um, and then one of them is this book called Mexican Gothic, which actually is on my, I'm just waiting for a copy to come available to hold for spooky season. But uh, so mm. a lot of, a lot of things we're into or interested in. So nice. anyways, art, thank you so much for playing and being flexible, uh, bumping back at night, but oh, I, thank you. Abs- I wanted to get this in and not just like, Oh, let's do it next time or cancel or something like this. It's a perfect time of year to do it. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of fun listeners. Thank you for checking this out. I hope you guys are, or all of you are also enjoying this content as well. Um, liminal horror is working on like a deluxe edition. There's a great discord for liminal horror. There's a, a website that has like all of everything ever made for liminal horror out there. You should go check that out. It's incredibly helpful. It's a, it's a product worth getting into and it's also super cheap. Uh, it's a little little zine game. Go check that out. You can go join our Discord if you want to come talk to us about Liminal Horror or about anything else, video games or whatever else is going on. Make sure you pop in, say hey to us. There's a link down in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you want to listen to us, we're on wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for us. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Take care, everybody. Good night, everyone. The music during the RPG session in Foundry was provided by the Foundry module Tabletop RPG Music and composed by Ian Fisher. You can find his Patreon at www.patreon.com slash tabletoprpgmusic, all one word.